We're going to do this module on female disorders. I want to just recall a bit about what DSM says in terms of diagnosis and in terms of our diagnoses as psychosexual therapists. So what we are looking at for the disorders, and to recap, DSM does not separate into female versus male. I'm just doing that for the purposes of teaching. But for every disorder, what we need to think about is whether it's situational, generalized, acquired, lifelong. Let's take a look in more detail at the female disorders. A lot of this is pulled straight from DSM, our current DSM-5. And so I'm not going to read through every point in the slide, but they are there for you to look at in more detail if and when you choose to do so. And a lot of these changes came in this DSM as a result of Rosemary Bassel's research. Now for women, desire kicks in quite late in the cycle. And interestingly, a lot of women will actually say that desire kicks in pre-orgasm. The tutorus contains exactly the same nerve endings as the tip of the male penis. That's quite an important educational point for us to say when we have the heterosexual couple in front of us. Because the man often gives the tutorus a touch as if it were the shaft of the penis um, and doesn't have feeling in it, whereas in fact it's incredibly sensitive to the tutorus. What is an or a female orgasm? What, what does it mean? Um, dating back to Freud, there were two types. You know, the clitoral orgasm and the internal female orgasm. Now, a lot of women still hold the internal female orgasm as a goal. So, for if you have vaginismus, which is a tightening of the pelvic floor muscle, which stops penetration, prevents penetration. So, the vagina tightens and the penis or tampon or even cotton bud can't get in. Then there's going to be pain. Okay, so vaginismus is usually coupled with dyspareunia because that's painful. 